Hey. Hey, you out there. Come closer. Me? You too. Come closer. I've got a deal for you guys. Would you like to win some extra cash? How about some extra paid time off? Free fitness membership or tuition reimbursement? Doesn't that sound like a deal? Yeah. You only have to do one thing. You just have to get the jab. That's all you have to do. Okay. And it's safe. Really? I'm an expert. That's all? I'm telling you it's safe. That's all? You have nothing to worry about. Great. Hello, this is Karen. And this is Kevin. And, and this, this is, is Right, right From, from us. us. Uh, so, yeah, that's that's happening. And that's, I mean, I'm... I'm making fun of it, but it's actually happening. So we have two competing hospitals here in our, our in our town. One of them just came out and announced that they're making the vaccine mandatory, and you have until September 30th to get it. Uh, so another hospital said, we, we kind of went crazy, like, oh, my gosh, is this going to mean our hospital is going to mandate it? What does this mean? Blah, blah, blah. And the big wigs came out, and they had a meeting. They said, no, no, we're not mandating it. You know, um, it's not mandated at this time. But... We are implementing a reward system for those that have been vaccinated. So if you've been vaccinated, you can enter a lottery to win extra cash and extra paid time off. And you unvaccinated people, <clears throat> wah, wah. too bad. You know, I just thought you're just out this. in the cold. Isn't that discriminating? Heck yes, it is just discriminating. And it's also pitting people against each other. I mean, the vaccine against the unvaccinated. It's discriminating based upon your health, your private health information. I know. It doesn't make sense. I don't know how they can legally do this. But I know what they're doing. They're going to offer these incentives and rewards and say, well, we did everything in our power to incentivize these unvaccinated people to get the jab. And they didn't want to do it. So now we have no choice but to mandate it. That's where we're heading, for sure. Yeah. Haven't they seen all the reports of the like the states that tried all kinds of lotteries and... And kind of backfired. And it, but did it, though? Didn't, it didn't work. They, they've they come out and said that it didn't work based upon their research. Well, I don't know. I might change my mind if they come knocking at the door and giving well, me more, some more if information. they offer you free beer or something really good like well, that? Well, Yeah. You know, I mean, if they offer me some free beer, that may be a game changer. <laughs> Forget about the thousands of dollars I could potentially win. Free beer, you got me. But are they and a are, donut? I are, want a donut are, too. Are all the things are, are all the things uh, you're entered in a drawing for? Are they offering anything specific? Uh, I think that, isn't it all you're you're entered in a drawing for these things? So yeah. it's just like a lottery. You yeah. Know? More than likely, uh, you're not going to win anything. Yeah, the drawings will be in two phases. One for employees who have already chosen to be vaccinated before July 10th. And another phase of weekly drawings for employees who signed up in the coming how much, weeks. How much, would it take, how much would it take to get you to be vaccinated? If they said, um, we'll give you 100000 Nope. The only thing that would take at this point in time to get me vaccinated is if the disease was proved like really serious and deadly for most people. Now, again, I'm not saying that it's a, it, that's, it doesn't exist. I'm not saying that it's not a real thing. And for some people, it can be very serious. Yeah. But the majority of people who are, are healthy and have very little comorbidities, it's not as big of a deal. That's why I don't understand why they're mandating and they're just so desperate to get everybody injected. For the people that haven't had the vaccine at this point, don't you think it's what they're doing is backfiring? I it, do. It, yeah. When, when someone is pa practically forcing me to do something, I really step back and say, whoa, whoa, whoa wait yeah, a like, minute. What like, are you, why, why are you so gung-ho on yeah, forcing why, this why on me? Why are you me? doing this? Yeah. Well, just like the people, you know, how they're threatening to send people door to door to talk to you about this stuff. Don't, and Don't you think it'd be more effective, effective if they just said, man, if you don't want to get vaccinated, <laughs> that's your loss. You know, it's up to you. Um, I think they would have an easier time yeah, of getting people to agree. All, yeah, all this stuff that they're coming out with that to me just that makes me not want to get it more. Well, yeah, I mean, sense. it just makes me all the more suspicious as to yeah. the motivations of why skeptical. they're so. I mean, I'm I'm generally skeptical anyway, mm -hmm. but it just makes me more skeptical when they're trying to offer all these incentives and things. 
yeah. and say that they're going to go door to door. Well, Oregon apparently is thinking about in implementing their National Guard and going door to door. Yeah, yeah. Big guy, big guy Biden this week said he he's um, he intends to send people door to door to educate uh, people about the virus and the vaccine. And then Oregon came out and said that they're going to they're going to send their National Guard or their did they say they're going to, or they said they're considering? I think they said they're considering it. Sending their national guard out. Yeah, and then someone posted like a manifesto um, for the people that have been tasked to go to door to door, kind of like a, a a script, if you will. Um, knock and then back up. Follow COVID nineteen distancing protocols and speak clearly. If someone is uncomfortable. With you being there in person, offer to give them more distance or leave them a flyer. Use your script. This will give you the, the basics. Once you get comfortable with it, feel free to make it sound like more like you, as long as all the key information is there. And then report on your work. Be sure to fill out the, the door knocking spreadsheet with the counts of who still needs the vaccine, who is currently vaccinated, who needs more information, <clears throat> etc. This is important information that the health department is relying on. And lastly, have fun because what you're doing is important and gosh darn it, you're saving lives. What are you going to do if the, when they, if, and when they come to the door and knock on our door and to educate us about the vaccine? I think it would probably be, it would probably behoove me to not answer the door. Yeah. I would, I would just, just be friendly. ignore it. I would just be friendly and basically say it's none of your business. I'm surprised that you would even answer the door. Why would, even put yourself in that situation? Oh, I like answering the door. <laughs> no, it would be intimidating though if you saw if you looked out your people and there's a couple of like army fatigue guys standing, yeah, standing there on your doorway, standing there with a syringe. Well, I mean, and maybe that's the point. Maybe they're wanting in, to intimidate people into getting the vaccine as well. I don't think that they're going to be tasked with actually giving them the vaccine at that point in time. I think they're just wanting to give them some information. Yeah. Do you think it ever could get to the point where they forcefully make you get the vaccine? Man, I don't know. You know that that's how uh, sure they, they can not. do that with with a drunk driver. They can they can actually um, forcefully take blood from a drunk driver to see if they have if they exceed the blood alcohol level. Really? So theoretically, they could do it. Really? Yeah. Now, what is the rationale for forcibly taking blood? I don't know. It's just that's they. I mean, I can kind of see that if a, prove, if a crime was committed. To prove, I mean, if there's a drunk drunk driving accident, oh. they can forcibly okay. take I blood can from you. Kind of see that. So they can definitely but, do that. Yeah, but I don't know. It's, I guess maybe because you've actually harmed someone. Yeah. In that case, but would I mean we are not harming anyone by not getting the vaccine. Regardless of what most people think out there, if I don't understand why everybody is so gung ho on the on the unvaccinated to get vaccinated, because if you've had the vaccine, you are protected. So, I don't understand why you're worried about me, who probably doesn't have a vaccine, yeah. against you, who has been immune to the vaccine. Yeah. It doesn't make any but, sense to me. But we're safe. We're safe here in Missouri. Our governor has said that the uh, using federal employees for uh, mass door to door vaccination campaign is not welcome so we're safe you know i know like i know the elites like to make fun of the midwest and the hillbillies and the you know gun toting people and stuff but to be honest that's not far off and uh i, I it would not go well i think for people <laughs> to go yeah, door to door I, in missouri i don't think missourians would go for I, it i would just be friendly, be friendly because you know these people are just doing their I job know. they probably just got hired you yeah. know <laughs> And so. in their mind, they're fully convinced that what they're doing is saving lives. Yeah. They're they're fighting the good fight. Yeah. So, you know, we just have to agree to disagree. Kind of like the Antifa rioters, and you know, they think they're doing they're doing good by going around burning buildings yeah, down. Yeah, I, I think I kind of disagree tearing down with statues that because you have to know when you are destroying killing property, police officers. You have to know that's wrong, and they they think that they are I, doing. I don't know, man. Well, then they've got a, a strange sense of of cause, well, I mean, duty, yeah. I guess. But yeah. I like this little um, <clears throat> thing you put on our spreadsheet. This little boy, he's drinking some tea or coffee. He's looking very smug, and he has a tinfoil hat on. And it says, I can always remove my tinfoil hat. Can you remove your spiked proteins? 
<laughs> I like that. That was pretty funny. That made me laugh. So anyway, there's a new um, form for a death certificate. Have you seen that? No, I haven't seen that. Yeah, there's there's uh, four check boxes for cause of death. One, one check box says COVID nineteen. The second check box is climate change. The third check box is systemic racism, and the fourth check box is all three. Oh my goodness! That's actually from the Babylon Bee, which is a funny, really funny website. Oh my gosh! Yes, they have a lot of good stuff on there. Their writers are so clever. Do you know that some people have actually thought that the the stuff on there was true, and they yeah. like complained about it. I know, but <laughs> I you think, know, didn't didn't some of the posts on Babylon Bee get blocked from Twitter? I think so. Or Facebook? I think so. I think that's just another example of how people lack critical thinking skills. They just, they just, they believe everything they read and everything they hear as gospel truth. Yeah, and just, okay, there's such thing as a joke. Well, and there's such thing as skewed information yeah. and, you know, biases and just, oh my Well, gosh. you can't even tell a joke anymore I without know. getting censored. I, I feel sorry for comedians. Can you imagine trying to do their job right now? You can't. You can't make jokes about anything without people without somebody getting offended. It's 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 just insane. Um, you heard about this new COVID variant, right? Well, there's the the epsilon variant. Yeah, apparently California epsilon strain of COVID nineteen could evade vaccines. Study says. A new study has found that COVID-19 vaccines may be somewhat vulnerable to the California Epsilon strain of virus. The variant has three spike protein mutations it uses to weaken current vaccines by up to 70%. The strain's mutations break down neutralized antibodies, which are produced by vaccines such as Pfizer and Moderna, and protect against infection. The spike protein, the spike mutations may also be able to sidestep the naturally produced antibodies a person forms. Um... After being infected with the coronavirus. So that means booster shots and yet more don't, injections. Don't you know we're just we're ramping up for the fall flu yeah. season, deadly COVID wearing masks and lockdowns. Yeah. Don't you for think sure. that's what's happening here? Well, you know, the majority of people feel like the vaccine did originate from a China lab and it was man made and it was accidentally released accidentally released who knows the truth nobody yeah. knows the truth we'll probably never know the truth yeah i mean that information was out there a year ago but twitter and facebook blocked it but isn't that what and i'm not a virologist a vi virologist virologist that's a mouthful uh so i don't i can't say obviously i'm not an expert but don't viruses as a general rule mutate Yes. I mean, like cold that's, viruses I mean, and flu, flu viruses. Virus, that's why you have yeah. a different flu so shot every year. this is never ending. I mean, if we're always going to freak out over every new mutant virus yeah. from the COVID-19, I mean, it'll be infinite. Yeah. You notice that they stopped calling them by the, 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 the geographic location that they originate from. Like the yeah. Delta virus is actually the Indian virus. So you can't say that because no, that's... of course. You can't say racist. Indian... You can't say that. So wh where is the Epsilon strain I don't know. originate from, I'm, does it say? Yeah, I don't know. Or is it just California? Say. Can you say the California strain? Or is that somehow I don't know. Statist? I don't know if it's the California. I think it's just, that's where it was first discovered maybe, but I don't know. But, you know, they're <clears> they're also um, they're wanting to vaccinate animals too against COVID. Some animals at the zoos in Madison and Milwaukee will receive an experimental COVID-19 vaccine. Animals susceptible to the respiratory disease are expected to be inoculated with the vaccine authorized by the U.S. Department of Agriculture by late July. No, no COVID-19 infections have been found in animals at the zoo, uh, but some of the big cats at the Bronx Zoo became sick when the pandemic was peaking. Um, this, the CDC said it's likely the animals became sick after being exposed to a caretaker with COVID-19, even though staff were taking precautions. So again, nobody really knows, you know, everything's speculation. I don't know. It's, I mean, I guess animals can come down with a respiratory disease. I mean, it just seems yet another crazy brick has, in this whole crazy town. Has there town. ever been an animal that has even caught COVID-19? 
I mean, that's like, that's like. Well, here's the thing. And aren't we kind of circling back to the original? I mean, because there's never been a successful animal trial of a COVID-19 vaccine. So I guess in some ways, yeah, let's go ahead and vaccinate some animals and see what happens. But at that point, does it really matter since millions of people have now been vaccinated? I mean, I don't know. I just feel like it gets more and more crazy. You know, actually, I'm I'm okay with that. I mean, if they want to do it to animals, that that sounds great. Well, that's what they should have done to begin with. That sounds awesome. They should have ran all these trials on animals or however they they approve it through the FDA before giving it out to the public. I mean, you read their their language. It's all about you know we we think we suspect. You know, we they're just the the language they use is it's never definitive because they don't know. <clears throat> The experts don't know because this is brand new. Well, I mean, there's competing experts out there. Just, you know, there's always, to any scientific theory, there's always going to be competing, you know, experts. It's just that the, the only one side has, has been accepted yeah. on this subject. And the other competing theories or whatever are just completely rejected and blocked and censored and you can't talk about it on Facebook or Twitter. I know there's vaccine mania led to all out suppression of COVID treatments. And I'm reluctant to talk about this because if I do, YouTube's going to take us down because, you know, we can't talk about this stuff. Yeah. If we ever disappear, uh, if our video doesn't show up on uh, YouTube, YouTube, then you can check over on rumble. We're there too. So, so I don't know. It's, um, But just a portion of this article, Americans are just starting to discover that most of what they thought they knew about the pandemic had has been not just a lie, but in many cases, a big lie. The opposite of the truth intentionally meant to deceive and manipulate entire populations at the same time. The reality of safe, effective, inexpensive and readily available medications that can both treat and prevent COVID infection has been ruthlessly suppressed at every turn. The first, the first lie to be exposed was that an entire healthy society should be quarantined, not just the sick and vulnerable, but everybody, including those with virtually zero risk from the virus. This radical departure from previous public health practice served to prolong the pandemic by preventing the necessary attainment of herd immunity. And I've always long thought that, that they just prolonged it, that this probably could have been over in six months if they had just stuck yeah. to the first 15 days to slow yeah. the spread until we knew what we were dealing with yeah. and then said, okay, here's, here's the situation. Take precautions, make your own educated choices and live your life. You know what I mean? If yeah. you're scared, then stay home. If not go about your life. Yeah. But they didn't do that. They locked everybody down, completely crippled the economy, which we still haven't recovered from. In fact, we're now going to have, well, inflation, but that's, you think that's probably not really part of the pandemic. That's mainly part of, largely part of Biden's decisions to spend all this money. Well, yeah, all the the ridiculous response, the government money coming, you know, supposedly to compensate yeah. people. But yeah. you know the the CNBC uh, or yeah CNBC <laughs> um, reporter said, well, the upside to that is that you're going to get a pay increase. <laughs> Your wages will go up if there's inflation. So this goes to good. show how much they don't understand and Matt inflation. Walsh, Matt Walsh said that's like saying the upside to your house burning down is that you'll have lower heating bills. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it just makes no sense whatsoever. Kind of like how Biden responds to skyrocketing gas prices by vowing to raise taxes on oil companies. You know, these people just don't understand basic economics. Mm-hmm. If you raise the taxes on oil companies what what are they going to do they're going to raise their prices more so they can pay their taxes right they're going to pass it on to the these consumers people, these which Democrats gas don't, is already just don't understand creeping it. up to three dollars and in fact in a lot of part, parts of the country it's over three dollars a gallon now yeah and they're saying that it's probably going to go up to four and yet you know biden just wants to it's it's the big it's the rich cat's fault you know it's the the millionaire's fault that this is happening it couldn't possibly be because he's been passing all these insanely expensive yeah, well, packages. That, well, and that Plus, the first thing he did when he got in office, one of the first things was get rid of the Keystone Pipeline. It's like, I know. do things like that. That's going to make oil prices yes, go up. duh. <laughs> I mean, I'm not an economist, but duh. 
I know. It's crazy. Uh, let's see. Uh, Richard Branson is going into space tomorrow. Yeah. So I guess did he? I guess he built his own rocket and funded it himself. And is he going yeah. by himself, or does he have anybody going with him? Or? He's got it's him and a, and a some girl that's like a social social media really gal. Wonder how that came. And about. I don't know if there's any more, but hmm. but anyway, uh, he, Ver, uh, Richard Branson, he's the Virgin Virgin Companies CEO. Mm-hmm. I've sort of always been fascinated with him, even though he's kind of like a left wing nut job. Um, I've sort of been fascinated with him because he's he's done things like fl- flowing a, a hot air balloon around the world and things like that. You know, has he? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I've really been and, keeping uh, up with him. He started his own airline. He did uh, Virgin uh, Virgin Mobile, mm-hmm. the, this cell phone company, which was our so- first cell phone. Yeah, I think one of his first things was like a, a, a record. Record company. Yeah, that's right. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah, Virgin Labels but now or something he, like that. He's, he has a space a spaceship. He's going to go to space tomorrow. And um, he's competing with Jeff Bezos of Amazon. He's going in nine days. So there was kind of a race yeah. for the first one. I guess it's the first person to be on a privately funded spaceship or something like that. Mm. So that's, well, that's kind of interesting. Godspeed. I hope he's safe yeah. doing it and, yeah. and all that stuff. That'd be scary. <laughs> yeah. Would you ever do something like that if you had the money and the means? No. No, not unless it was proven. You know, I mean, he's, have they even had any tests? I guess they have had several test flights. But, oh, I'm sure they probably yeah. have. And also speaking of Virgin, they've got a cruise line, a brand new cruise line. Are you serious? Yeah. Do you, you didn't know no, about this? No, I didn't hear about that. They've got this a brand new cruise line and they've, really? I think they've got... I know they've got at least one, maybe three ships or something like that, and they have not wow. been able to have one cruise yet because wow. they they just started, like last year when the COVID hit. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah. Speaking of that, don't you have a link on here about the cruise industry? <clears throat> yeah the uh, the Florida CDC smackdown in cruise lawsuit. Yes. But there's no link, so I can't like kind of I know what's. Um. Basically, what happened was, um, and I'm probably going to botch this completely, but the, there was a, the, the CDC, the state of Florida was suing the CDC because the CDC was b- basically blocking cruises and saying you can't do any cruises. And the Florida came back and said, yes, we can. So they sued them. And the, the judge says, yes, you can do cruises no matter what the CDC says. You just have to come up with your own procedures, basically. Hmm. So... The the lost lawsuit is still continuing, hmm. but the CDC was wanting to block, continue to block the cruises from Florida, and that got what is that CDC's got smacked down this beef week. with the cruising the industry? CDC, they have way too much power. Like the way CDC, too much clout. The CDC was you know stopping landlords from evicting people for not paying their rent for the last, and I think that's continuing. Actually, but wow. anyway, that, that's just a, a, an example of government government agency having way too much power. How can the CDC tell landlords that they can't evict somebody? I, I, mean, I do not possible? know. I really do not know how they have the authority to do that. I don't know. Um, and uh, did you hear about Trump's lawsuit? His big announcement. Yeah, they're touting this as. Uh, the most important free speech case of the century. So if you don't know, President Trump announced that he is filing a, is a class action lawsuit? Yeah. Because anybody can really join this lawsuit, right? Yeah, it's it's President Trump and then there's another couple of names and then it's a class thing, hmm. apparently. Oh yeah, here it is. Former President Trump's class action lawsuit alleging censorship by big tech companies is the most important First Amendment case of the 21st century. Um, The case announced this week is important because it pits freedom of speech on the one hand against the First Amendment on the other hand. Um, Dershowitz, is that how you say his name? Alan Dershowitz? Dershowitz. I guess, is he the lawyer? Yeah. Uh, No. No, he's a a Harvard law professor. Yeah. He's just commenting on the lawsuit, apparently. He was actually one, one of President Trump's attorney's 
Oh, for was he? the impeachment. I think the first impeachment, I think. It says, Dershowitz but, acknowledged that his description of the case may sound paradoxical, but he argued that the tech giants claim they have a right to censor certain content under the First Amendment. So they're using the First Amendment as a sword against freedom of speech, the Harvard professor said. That's why I call this the new censorship. The old censorship was carried out by the government in cases such as the Pentagon Papers, which Dershowitz had a part in arguing based on the First Amendment. Now the First Amendment is being used to close the marketplace of ideas to anybody who disagrees with the giant tech people. This is why this is an important case. Nobody can predict the outcome. Uh, there's never been a case like this previously presented. There are cases, presidents going both ways, and no one can predict what the outcome would be. But I think it will be a great, great educational experience for Americans to see the First Amendment put on trial. Hmm. So he's he's uh, he's leading against Twitter, Facebook, and Google. He he claims they violated the First Amendment rights when they banned him from their platforms. This is President Trump. Trump announced he will lead a lawsuit alleging Twitter, Facebook, and Google violated his First Amendment rights when they banned him from their platforms after the January sixth riot at the Capitol. So, um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I think something needs to happen. I think they definitely need well, to have some repercussions. I mean, the, the, the big tech always hides behind this Section 230 thing, mm -hmm. which basically they, they you know, it says that they, can, they can't be sued for something somebody else posts on there. Yeah, it says Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act provides immunity for social media companies, treating them as neutral platforms rather than publishers, which are legally liable for their content. But... It's a different story when the Facebook or Twitter is actually coming out and saying something themselves. Hmm. You know. You mean like, like their little like, comments yeah, about. Like this is not true. or This is false information. Like they're fact checking. Or, or comments. like when they said, uh, who's the other guy that's getting, that's suing Facebook. Um, I can't think of his name. But anyway, they basically compute. Com com said he was a conspiracy theorist, mm -hmm. you know, or something. So we know Candace Owens also sued Facebook. Yeah. So what, what's the she, status of that? She sued Facebook's fact checkers. She said today that it's still ongoing. <clears throat> yeah. Um, and that's the problem with, with these lawsuits. I mean, that's really the only way you're going to make any headway is by suing these people, but that takes money. It takes time. Um, and it's not something that just your average Joe can, can yeah. participate in. Yeah. This thing with president Trump, in, initiate. He, he's suing him for like, trillions good so i hope he does this, this will get their attention for i sure. hope so it needs to they, they need to be brought down a peg or two they've gotten too big for their britches um and yeah they, they just can't you can't censor people like that you can't go against the free speech well they can and they have well i know but that's why it's just gonna think, be so interesting think to about see all what the things that have been lawsuit. censored over the last year oh, man well i mean we've been censored yeah. I mean, one of our videos was taken down. Yeah, and we, we were, to tell you the truth, we we sort of watch what we say because of that. Well, of course, everybody on YouTube does. Yeah, I mean there are, there are many many content creators that I watch to say, I mean, okay, well I can't say this word because YouTube yeah. will strike me. You so can't, you can't talk about alternative cures right. that are out there that doctors are talking about. You can't talk yeah, about they've that. censored doctors. Yeah, doctors. They've censored doctors. Think about yeah, that for a minute. Doctors, how many? How many lives have been, how many lives have been lost because of the censor, censorship of YouTube and Twitter? Well, yeah, because I these mean, they, people they didn't really know there was be, an alternative. They it's really criminal. Should be held accountable for it's that. It's criminal, in my opinion. It really Absolutely. Is. Yes. Yeah, I, I think so too. But I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what comes of this lawsuit. And, um, you know, I'm sure part of the reason that they did it because you know Trump's like, oh, you're not going to censor me. But it, this is a much bigger issue than just Trump. Speaking of, it just kind of popped in my head. Did you hear that they finally took the gates down around from the, around the Capitol in Washington? I didn't hear that. Yeah, they finally took the gates down. So you know now it's down the people's capital again. I mean, talk about a terrible first impression. Biden gets up there and starts and puts a fence around the Capitol first thing. Uh, anyway, so well, I mean, you know, there. There probably should be higher security there, and you know there's a there's a lot of these people from the January sixth protest that are still in jail. 
I know. Isn't that? And that's, that is what is it? So six months ago. Insane. With like no hope of getting out. I mean, they've got like grandmas. Yes. In that jail. Is insane. <laughs> grandmas that were just like going around taking pictures of the Capitol in jail. You know. Yeah, they and they had no idea what was happening. They were just caught up. Yeah. They were the wrong place at the and, wrong time. I mean, time. They're, they're still trying to track down people, apparently. But yet, there was like, you know, how many hundreds of riots over the year, de- you know, Democrats rioting, mm-hmm. that, you know, basically nothing is going to happen. And I guess, you know, think, if you think about what we were just talking about, the, the, the lawsuit with the big tech, do you think anything is ever going to come of that? I don't know. It seems like all these things, no, nothing ever happens. You know, Hillary Clinton's emails, Hunter Biden's laptop, and on and on and on. Right. N- you know, nothing. Right. Yeah, I know. It's, it's, uh, we live no, in a scary world ever comes right of now, it. for yeah. sure. And speaking of, grocery stores begin stockpiling food, critical items as times get difficult under Biden. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, you know, people, you, you really should always have at least a couple of weeks worth of food sitting around in your pantry if you can at, at, at all do it, you know. just Yeah. It says, grocery stores are beginning to hoard food and other critical items in preparation for rising prices and demand across the country. Supermarkets are hoarding things like baking ingredients and frozen meat as executives are anticipating some of the highest price increases observed in recent years, according to the Wall Street Journal. We're buying a lot of everything. David Smith, Chief Executive Officer of Associated Wholesale Grocers Incorporated, David, said. David Smith. Yeah, do you know David Smith? That's that's a special company, isn't it? As AWG Associated Wholesale Grocers. I, I think I. That's not like think, a countrywide thing. No. Well, I don't know. That's they. Oh, I think they're surely. based in. Oh, well, I don't know. Or whatever. Our, in- our town. Our inventories are significantly over the same period last year. Associated Wholesale Grocers, a wholesaler for over 3,000 grocery stores, recently purchased 15 to 20% more inventory, Smith said. Uh, some grocery stores are buying and storing supplies to keep their shelves full in response to an increase in demand. So when are they ex- anticipating this increase in demand happening? Like soon? Around Christmas time in the fall? We're also buying ahead on cleaning products for the fall and back to school. Uh, we're buying more ingredients for home cooks, including flour and spices. They're also buying more paper products and imported goods along with frozen food. So, I mean, I guess the lesson learned here is you probably should have a stockpile of food somewhere. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, that's In actually Can- Kansas City, Kansas oh. located, but they do have right. actually, <laughs> I'm not allowed to say that location. It doesn't matter now, does it? I guess you could bleep it out. <laughs> I'll have to bleep that out. Sorry about that. <clears throat> yeah. When when do they expect the, you know, the fall? It's going to be the fall. There's going to be, don't you think there's going to be another big scare? I mean, they, basically, this the Delta, Probably. the deadly Delta variant, yeah. variant came out just in time for 4th of July. Don't you think they're going to come up with the, something for the fall? I don't know. Potentially, you know. Every time they say something like "deadly" in the news media, don't I'm you think it's like? Don't you think it's the opposite of that? I think that they're just calling whiff too many times, yeah, and people say, are just not. If they say something's a hoax, then it's really the opposite of that. Yeah. Don't you think that whatever the news media says, it's really the opposite? Yeah, I don't know. LinkedIn deletes the mRNA inventor's account. Really. Yeah, what, what's that guy's name? Uh, the the inventor of the the mRNA. Dr. Technology. Robert Malone. Yeah, yeah, he was on that. Brett, you know, Brett Weinstein. Yeah, yeah, Dark yeah. Horse. The Dark Horse podcast is interesting, by the way, guys. If you want to check it yeah, out. Yeah, the the guy that that um, invented the mRNA technology got got kicked off of LinkedIn. Yeah, who identifies himself as the inventor of mRNA of course, you vaccines. Know, said LinkedIn. that LinkedIn recently deleted his account after he made comments about mRNA COVID-19 vaccines and questioned whether they're appropriate to give to certain groups of people. Yeah. This is the the guy that's like invented yeah, this invented saying it. this. But, I mean, in LinkedIn's defense, is that really appropriate to be talking about stuff like Probably that on LinkedIn? Because that's like an employment type yeah. website. Yeah. 
I don't know. I guess. But that's kind of curious, though, that the the inventor of the technology is sort of questioning things. But he's a. I mean, he's a conspiracy theorist and a. Well, wacko and, again, I can you know. take my tinfoil hat off, but can you remove the spike proteins? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, I guess. You know, I don't know that I really have anything else to talk about. Well, let's get to the questions. Let's get to the good part. How are we doing on time? We're getting way up there on time. Oh, no, we're not. I yeah, just saw it. Let me see. Yep. Yeah, see, we're right on target. Um. So let's talk about what we did today. Okay. What'd you do today? Well, we had our appointment. Oh, that's right. Today, we went up to the funeral home and purchased our plots. Um, and it was a really interesting, awkward conversation. <laughs> um, she was very nice. She was very, very nice. Um, it's just, you know, it's just a weird topic to talk about. Um, but she said something that literally brought me to tears. <laughs> Are you gonna you wanna say it? You wanna talk about it? Oh well, from time to time they <laughs> offer specials on, you know, the things that go along with <laughs> buying your cemetery yeah. plot, like Which, I mean, you, you know, know, the headstones and the whatever else, you know, yeah. the the crypt or whatever. I don't know what else. But they, they the accessories, the yeah, funeral accessories. They, yeah, funeral and funeral accessories. <laughs> they they apparently had a uh back in March they had a March madness sale. <laughs> 40% off, 40% off. So, you know, that would have been a good month to die, I guess. Yeah. And, you know, it's like, yeah. oh, okay. That's, yeah. uh... Make sure you kick the bucket before April 1st. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that sounds so terrible to say and laugh at, but, you know, it's just like, I guess, funeral humor, I guess, but it just sounded so funny. You know, they got, but her got reaction to, to it was even more priceless because she's like, she, well, I thought it was a joke at first. It's just like, oh my gosh, this is not a joke. This yeah. they're serious. Yeah. <laughs> so that's funny. So we told her if they have any more, uh, any more promotions, sales. let us know. <laughs> yeah, that was 40%. I mean, just, just mean? think of other things they could do, like a July 4th sale. You know, you can go out with a boom. Oh, no. <laughs> that's terrible. But it was funny. But um, that kind of helped the awkwardness What's a little the next? bit. But the next, of course, that was a sporting event thing. I guess they could have like a World Series yeah, sale wow. or a Super Bowl. I don't know. It was event. weird. But yeah. anyway, so we have our plots now and now we know when we're going to be buried. <laughs> I know that's a really morbid conversation, but I mean, it's a conversation you should have because, you know, death is part of life. So unfortunately, that's not something you can avoid. It's going to happen eventually. Yeah. Yep. So hopefully not just for a long time. Just try to be prepared, you know? Yeah, we don't want to we don't want to stick our kids with a big funeral bill and cuz funerals yeah, can be just, pretty pricey. Just make sure all the pre preparations are made, you yeah, know. Yeah, for sure. For sure. But, you know, that's something that we've been talking about to do for a long long time. We can check it off our checklist and so anyway, so that was kind of an interesting start to our weekend, but we got that taken care of. And then you found some great we found something really great for our trailer today. Yeah, we've been really going back and forth as far as what we're going, going to do for the seating area. What kind of couch or what is going to be yeah, there? Yeah, and the primary reason for that is because we have wheel wells, right? And they, you know, they, they're the kind that stick that are inside yeah, there's of the these, trailer. Th these fenders that stick out yeah. inside, like they're like nine inches high and nine inches wide. It's yeah. kind of a problem. It's yeah. Like, what are we going to do sure. about that? Because we have dual wheels on yeah. our trailer. Yeah. So I, I've sort of been kicking kicking around the idea of getting like these on, on Wayfair. They have these uh, patio, wicker mm -hmm. patio furnitures that they're kind of like boxes almost. Right. They go all the way to the ground. I'm thinking that we could just notch out one of the boxes mm -hmm. and fit it right over the fenders. Right. So Because I mean, anyway, we have to do something because we... I mean, we don't have a lot of room, but we got to have some place to sit. So we were yeah. just trying to figure out how we can manipulate that in that space. And then you text me a picture of something today at the Humanity for Habitat or Habitat for Humanity. Yeah, I went, to, went over to the recycling center oh, at recycling Habitat, center. Habitat for Humanity. And when I saw this thing, it's like I couldn't even believe my eyes. It was like basically not exactly what I'm looking for, but sort of the same. 
uh-huh. form format, like a uh-huh. sectional. Yeah, because you were always wanting to do some kind of sectional. S- yeah, I th- we, something I was that we can like move around a sectional and manipulate. Would be, we can move it around uh-huh. based upon what we're doing that day or right. whatever. And this is kind of like a sectional. Yeah, it's not exactly what I was looking for, but yeah, it's the price pretty was close. right. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! Okay, so you think it's part of a bus? You think, or what? I mean, what do you think these seats uh, are? When I first saw it, I thought they were some kind of bus seat because they're like the frame is made. It's made out of metal, covered with plastic, hmm. and a vinyl. It's got a vinyl seat. Mm-hmm. But then I started looking around it a little closer, and they they say a, a company name on there. It's almost like it was something in in one of their um, in a company's lobby or something. Hmm. Gotcha. I mean, or maybe the, like a comp- a company's um, break area or something. Possibly. And you said they had a ton of these, they right? Had just a big old huge stack of them. Yeah. So I wonder if it's just like some kind of oh, here's some thunder in the background. We're gonna get some rain. Um, I wonder if it was like some kind of liquidation kind of sale thing where the company maybe went out of business and they got rid of all their furniture or whatever. Uh, I don't think so. You don't the, think so? The company is, I think, is still in business. Oh. And it, a lot of times maybe? when people just when they upgrade, they just oh. take it over there and just yeah. donate it to the. I mean, the color's it's not okay. exactly what we wanted, but it's not bad. It's okay. I mean, it's um, fine. It's in great shape. Not yeah. too bad, really. Yeah, it's in great shape. Um, and we can always pretty easily make some coverage for it mm-hmm. somehow. True. And I you mean, bought you're such a good four. Sewing. Oh, yes. I mean, let's see how he laughs because, yeah, that's, that's a big a fat machine. line. Um, we do? Yeah, up in the attic. <laughs> we still have Nanny's sewing machine. I don't machine. think I even knew that. Yeah. Still? Yeah. Oh, I thought you got rid of that thing a no, long we, time we ago. we tried to sell it at a garage sale. Oh. It didn't sell, so My I think I still My poor mom got is it. probably shaking her head right now because I am not a sewer, like, at all. <laughs> I'm, I'm lucky to be able to sew a That's button on. That's something, a new hobby you could take out. Oh, that, especially if I lose my job, and, you know, because yeah. of the mandated vaccines. Who knows? Yeah. But Anyway, these were $5 a piece. Five? Dollars. Yeah, you know, I've been really just like um, look looking around, and th- I, I was thinking it was going to cost five hundred dollars. Yeah. Oh yeah. Five hundred dollars. The we, thing that I've been looking on Wayfair, they're over five hundred dollars. Yeah. Well, when we were talking about this at the very beginning, we knew we we said okay, the the split, mini called? split, mini split, the fridge, and probably the sofa is going to be our most money makers or the most expensive things we put yeah. in this thing. The mini split came with a dent in it so we got it for a good deal we got the yeah the vendor gave you us got a, a good deal for that we got yeah we got we used a gift card on the refrigerator yeah and then i've got these this this um sectional thing for five dollars each for so twenty dollars four you got you got four sectionals three with backs and one like just like a stool yeah uh which i think it's great it's kind of like a bench i'll be on bench but four <clears> pieces <throat> for twenty dollars yeah, it's amazing. You and should. Are you going to put a picture put of a this picture. up? Yeah, it's really amazing. I love it. I and lo- at this point, I'm, I'm sort of just kind of viewing it as a temporary solution. But I don't know. It's. it's I think it looks great. Yeah, and we can double it as a stool to get up on the bed because the bed's so high that we're going to have. And to also have push it together to use it yeah. as a bed mm-hmm. for for, you know, for anybody that yeah. wants to camp with us or whatever. Yeah. Now I think it. I think that was a golden find. I cannot believe how cheap that was. But yeah, good job. I think that's awesome. It's one of those things that they were just trying to get rid of them because it's well, just something unusual. But that's that's just that just proves that one man's trash is another man's treasure. I know. When I saw it, know? it was just like, I can't believe what I'm looking at here. Right. This is I mean, almost it's ex- a- exactly what you were thinking. Yeah. 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 Because when you said a little sectional, I was thinking, what? How can we possibly get a little sectional in that space? But the way you've got it arranged, which yeah. I don't know why I never thought about this. I always thought of a sectional up against the wall only. Yeah. But you, we've got these these pieces facing each other, just like a little little sitting area. Like a little you booth. know, yeah. And it's yeah. I love it. It's just perfect for this space. I think it's going to yeah. work out great. Um, okay, so let's get to a couple of questions here. I don't know if you guys can hear the thunder in the background, but we've got a storm coming. Uh, probably need some rains. Pretty. Pretty dusty and dry. Yeah, it's here. been pretty dry the last yeah. week or so. Yeah, we haven't I mean, gotten any like rain. It goes from one extreme to the to yeah, the next. Yeah, I year. mean that's we, Midwest weather for you. you just we, um, had, I mean, we had all kinds of rain in May. Was very wet. Yeah, in May. May was a very wet month. And then May and June, and then yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, so let's hit a couple of questions here, and I, I don't can't quite think of an answer for from my perspective on this, but. 
Whose life philosophy do you admire? I mean, Martin Luther King. I know I think he was pretty great and his message was pretty positive. He's checking out the weather. We've got a big, we've got a line coming toward us. It looks like, um, anyway, so whose philosophy do you admire? Aren't you kind of reading Socrates right now or Aristotle or something I've like got, that? I got, I got a Aristotle book. I have not started. Oh, yet, lights though. flashed. Oh, oh wow. you have to hear that. Oh. Do you guys hear that? That's thunder for sure. Uh, okay. So, so philosophy, whose philosophy do you admire? Are you shopping? <laughs> I believe he is shopping as we are talking on this podcast. I'm not. I'm what are you looking at shipping tools for? Snipping. Oh, snipping. Well, are you can try to snip it. Oh, you can snip it for the, for the viewers to see. Uh, That's okay. We're not in any rush or anything. Just take your time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're only live too. No big deal. So how are you guys? Doing good? I hope you're doing Who's good. Who's philosophy? Well, Jesus. Oh, well, yeah, that's pretty important. And <laughs> Paul, you know, of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, who's philosophy? Anybody current? Anybody's current philosophy that you admire? I really admire. Well, I admire. Oh, it's really pouring now. Out, yeah. yeah. I admire Candace Owens. Uh, I think her um, philosophy is pretty dead on. I mean. Spot on. John Chain Height, for sure. Sure. And sure. Uh, Charlie Kirk. Uh huh. Yep. Charlie's got some good stuff, for sure. Yeah. Very inspiring people, for sure. Um, but that's all I can think of at this point. Yeah. Um, if you believe in heaven, what do you think it will be like? <clears throat> It's okay. Take your time. <laughs> okay, you go we, first. We, we all like watching you shop. <laughs> <laughs> I'm shopping for some new a new sofa. No. Uh, yes, I believe in heaven, <clears throat> but it's heaven on earth. Correct. It's not like <clears throat> heaven in the skies. Well, there's heaven. There's heaven, but contrary to most teachings, in the age to come, we're actually going to be on earth. Yeah, it's paradise on earth is how the Bible describes yeah. it, right? Yeah, I mean we'll be in we'll be in heaven for a short per period of time as we're meeting the Lord when He comes back. But ultimately, we're going to be on earth. It's going to be paradise here on earth. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, but, but what, 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 what do, do you think it's going to be like? like? Yeah. Uh, well, I, I don't it's going to be it's going to be paradise. I mean, it's going to be no sickness. So you're talking about here on earth? I mean. Well, heaven. The, the future. Well, yeah. If you believe in heaven, what do you think it will be like? So the heaven according to the Bible. Do you think about, do you think the um, the millennial kingdom or the, the everlasting kingdom? Ooh, what's the difference between the two? <laughs> well, I don't know if we should get into that right here, but. but well, why not? I'm curious. <clears throat> I don't know. Well. Just give me the Cliff Notes version. Um, I'm not an expert on this, but. The millennial kingdom, there's, it's going to be a thousand years after the tribulation is over and oh. after the Lord comes back and a, after the f um, the first res resurrection. So the, basically it's the, the first kingdom. resurrection, then the millennial kingdom, which it gives people another chance to come to Christ, right? Well, there, there'll be in the millennial kingdom, there'll actually be, actually be spiritual people that have been resurrected. Hmm. And there'll also be... Um, natural people that that go wow. through this sheep and goat judgment. I don't think I knew that. Yeah. So huh. there will actually will be death in the millennial, millennial kingdom. The, the natural people will, would die. Yeah. can actually still die. Huh. In the, Interesting. Yeah. Okay, so then after the millennial, then what was it? Then there's the second re resurrection, which is the resurrection of the unjust. And then that's when the the final battle occurs. And that's when the future kingdom is set up on earth got you and that's and, that's when there's no death and you know no tears and no sickness know. yeah no sickness yeah you have a new body yeah we'll be on earth working yeah, yeah. and you are working depending on you get rewards depending yeah. on what kind of christian you were yeah when you were here before right. that time right so yeah 
So you'll be in a mansion and I'll be sweeping streets. <laughs> I don't. I doubt that. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> Uh, okay, if you had to spend one year living alone in a remote cabin, what would you spend your time doing? If you were by yourself in a cabin out in the middle of nowhere for one Do year. Do I have electricity? Uh, well, knowing you, you would figure it out. You would probably make something. Uh, you know... So let's say that, let's say for the sake of argument, you don't have electricity, then how would that change your answer? I would just be like, adding, be, I'd be building onto my cabin. Yeah, probably. that's exactly what I was going to say. <laughs> I'd be adding rooms You would to my be cabin. figuring out how to make your life more functional, yeah, more I'd be comfortable. Knock, knocking down walls in the cabin and making it bigger and <laughs> adding a basement and maybe an upstairs. Yes, I think you would. That's you really would. would. That's what you I would, would be, do. You would be looking to improve your environment. I just don't like to sit still. You like I, if I start, if I sit still, I just start thinking about things I should be doing. Oh my gosh! You know, see, we're kind of the exact opposite on that because you know what I'd be doing? I'd be reading by candlelight. Yeah, I know. I know that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, like even even like when I go to the beach. Yes, I know. You know, he. It's kind of. You know. You know. I spent spent my time doing the last time we went to the beach. Thinking about what you need to do when you get back home? No. Searching for the shiny shells. Oh, yeah. You spent hours doing that. <laughs> yeah, he did, actually. Um, and I sat there and read while he did that. So, um, yeah, I don't, I forgot. I lost my I kept finding these. I kept finding these shiny, they weren't abalone shells, but they're like really shiny shells. And I was thinking I could use these for some kind of project someday. So I got a whole bunch of these really shiny shells. There had, when we were down in Florida last September, there had been there had just been a hurricane, tropical storm come through. Mm -hmm. So there was all kinds of stuff on the beach. So I couldn't let Did that. Did you end up making anything out of nope, that? No, I still got that oh, stuff in do. a bag in the garage. But Yeah. So uh, could you handle being by yourself for one year with no oh, other yeah. people? Like oh, just yeah. yourself? Oh, yeah. Yourself? Yeah, sure. Um, could you? <laughs> Easily. <laughs> Oh, yeah, that's preferable to be. But for you, I find, I don't know, I find that hard to believe. I think after a couple of months, you, would, you wouldn't like that. I don't know. Can I have a guitar in the cabin? I would probably play the guitar and the violin. No, knowing you, you'd probably build a guitar out of I would probably build wood a guitar. and, I don't yeah. know, other things. But yeah. uh, let's see, that felt like that's kind of a cliche question. Yeah, I think we've already pretty much talked about that, too. What's your biggest pet peeve? Oh, Lord. Oh, Lord. I could go on and on and on about this. Biggest? I, hmm. Are you going to go first? Or no, you go first. Just people that aren't considerate of others. Yes, That's for like in, sure. In all categories of life, you know, driving, mm -hmm. use your blinkers, you know. Don't yeah. don't stop and back up in the middle of the street, you know. Yeah. Uh, and when you're at the grocery store, don't just stop in the middle of the aisle and answer the phone. We had that happen the phone yesterday. yesterday. Yeah. Just be it's considerate like, of others. And there were, he was literally in the middle of the aisle and he stops. Hello. Yeah. It's like, it's like, uh, it's, it's like, like people are building up yeah. behind him. Just there's other people in the world. Yes. <laughs> for okay, sure. What about you? Oh my gosh. I feel like there's so many. <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Um, My biggest pet peeve, I guess it has to be driving as well. People that are on their phone and not paying attention to driving, um, you know, doing everything but driving, basically. It just, it just, I mean, that drives me insane. I don't know what it is, but it seems like the last couple of days have been really, really yeah, bad I don't drivers know in what's town. Going what, on. What's going on with that? Is there people, are people distracted I, by the... I, I'm, I'm, Delta, well, there's no question. Delta variant. Well, people are distracted by a fly on their windshield. I mean, they're just, they're distracted by everything nowadays. Pe seriously, people get in their car and driving is the last thing they're thinking about when they're in the car. And it's just, it's, it's maddening. It's just maddening. Um, I think they, you know, cars have gotten so comfortable. It's like you're in mm -hmm. this little bubble mm -hmm. and you don't, For sure. I think it encourages people not to really pay, pay attention to their surroundings. Well, and not only that, but I guess people think that you can't, they can't see you in the car. Yeah. You know, it's like, uh, yeah. we can, I, I can, can see, see you over you. there picking your nose, 
you know, putting her makeup on, doing whatever. Uh, yeah, it's 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 crazy. Uh, also, I think grammatical things drive me absolutely crazy. Like people's insistence on spelling lose as L O O S E. It's not loose. It's lose one O. That drives me crazy. And I see that more and more now. People have just I, in the younger generation. They, they all, and I know this firsthand from working with some pretty young people, they all rely on spell check. So they're terrible spellers, terrible spellers. Yeah. And when spell check puts in the wrong yes. thing, it's like they don't even know. And notice when you're it. charting people's, you know, health yeah. and stuff, that's a legal document. You got to yeah. spell correctly. You got to use correct punctuation. So it drives me crazy that that's not, people don't give that more importance. You know, I mean, I have a T-shirt that says I'm silently judging your grammar and because it's important. <laughs> I mean, it just is. Because I mean, when you pay attention to grammar, you're paying attention to details. That means you're, uh, you're coherent. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. Don't you Do you think, disagree with that? No. Don't you think just generally everybody is not as smart as they used to be back in the olden days? It's like math and yeah, oh, for sure. English and, and, and history. You have to blame our educational system because they don't they're not focused on that. They're focused on critical race theory. They're focused on separating and segregating the kids. Yeah. Like whites against blacks. Yeah. They're not interested in teaching your children any usable skills to, you know, yeah. to survive life. Yeah. And it's sad. It's it's just yeah. terrible. It's a discredit to your children. Yeah. So anyway, um, those questions came from Table Topics. You can see these, you can get these questions and more at tabletopics.com. No, this is not sponsored. Um, we just like to use these questions. They're great conversation starters. So if you're looking for any kind of party favors, <laughs> I don't, that's not really the right word, party, uh, just get the party started. Then you can try some of these questions out. They're pretty fun. So, so are we done? I think so. I think we're all done. Is that it for today? I felt like you checked out about 15 minutes ago. I, I don't know what. I just could not get fired up this week. I don't know what is the. I, I don't it's know. not obvious or anything. I'm, yeah, I, just in I'm case sure. you were wondering. But All right. I think that's it. We're getting rain. We're getting a lot of rain. Yeah, I wonder if you can see the. I think the storm, the, the major storm has passed by us though here. Yeah. It's just one of those summer showers. You know, they pop up here and there. Yeah. Anyway, you guys, thanks so much for listening. We appreciate yeah, your time. Thanks for watching and listening. And have a great week. Yep. Thank you. See ya. Bye. Bye. You know, Candace also talks about how, you know, she has asthma really bad. And there are times she has to have breathing treatments. Check one, two. Check one, two. Okay. Okay. Hey, hey, you. Come here. A little closer. Have I got a deal for you? Um, what should I say? <laughs> I'm trying to figure it out. Well, I'm trying to do, but I'm trying to think.